Oh! Yeah, I feel like if you can see the steams and the flames coming out of my head. What's going on everybody? Before we get into that Hunan episode of Fung Rose Food, we gotta tell you about a brand new YouTube channel called Gold Thread. Gold Thread is a new publication talking about Chinese food, travel, identity, art, music, culture, and it is run by a group of reporters and filmmakers from the US to Asia. They are making some of the dopest and most interesting content about China, period. For example, did you know that sriracha is actually a version of a Thai sauce that was started by a Chinese Vietnamese immigrant David Tran in America? And this name right here, Hue Fong Foods, is actually the name of the Taiwanese freight ship that was carrying David Tran and a whole lot of other refugees over to America at that time. How would you know that? Dude, it's something that people use every day. It's love and adored, but you don't even know where it comes from. So check out this quick clip from Gold Thread about the most famous Asian American sauce ever. Sriracha. It's an American hot sauce with a cult following. Started by a Chinese Vietnamese refugee in 1980. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and that you guys learned a lot. I certainly have watching Gold Thread. For example, they have this video about the Macanese people, which are a mixture of Chinese and Portuguese people, and they have a hybrid language and culture that's disappearing. Yo, I thought they were all Chinese. Another video they have is about the Chinese Bob Marley, which is a guy named Kawa, who is an ethnic minority in China. I mean, basically, they're just covering a lot of cool stories coming out of China. You guys got to check it out. I learned a ton of stuff and they actually made it cool. You know, it's crazy, China is the biggest country in the entire world, but very, very few people know anything about it, and Gold Thread is trying to fix that. If we had Gold Thread growing up, I think I would've paid more attention in Chinese school, I probably would've learned Chinese better, it would've, it would've made me more interested in China at a young age. So definitely check out the Gold Thread YouTube channel and subscribe down below. We are in the restaurant Xin Xiang Hao, AKA Xiang Cuisine in Monterey Park in the 626. Do you guys wanna hit the kitchen? Xin Xiang Hao. I bet you it's gonna be hot. All right, guys, we're about to go check out some of our dishes that are coming out. As you guys can see here, look, you got the sterno gel. That's for like the little hot pots that they're gonna light on fire. I would say this is a pretty classic like Chinese kitchen. First of all, this kitchen's huge. That They just got mad woks. Yo, this food, look at that steaming, show it. So good, man. Sweet. That's heat world. <laughs> Alright you ah. guys, we are at Xiang Cuisine here in Monterey Park. Hunan is actually pretty much right above Guangdong. Cantonese people known for not liking spicy foods, but then right above us is a province where they love spicy. There are three levels of spiciness. We did get level one out of three. In front of me, we have the pork and pepper dish. Can we call it the Peppa Pig? They need super thinly sliced pork for this dish, and then they need fresh peppers. Don't make me get a little seeds up in that pepper right there. I already oh ate the whole thing, man. Oh, it was good. It was flavorful. Later, as I got older, I really appreciated just eating peppers. I think sometimes in certain dishes, the peppers are chopped so big. You get the black bean fish cod, yeah. those pepper pieces are like not even cooked. Yeah. That's what I hate, but cooked peppers are delicious, mm. man. So this is called la ro tao lo bo. This is the smoked meat with stir-fried radish. In Cantonese, the lab This is like the meat that's hanging. Yeah, you dry marinade. My parents make it at home. No. Nope. It does taste like bacon. First of all, the flavor is kicking. But I had to go with Chung La. When we said Xiao La, which is like little spicy, they took it to heart. <laughs> we just told them to make the food a little bit hotter. If you've ever had really spicy Thai food, the heat that you get from it is really fresh because it's coming straight from the fresh chili. Hunan, in their cooking, they use a little bit more fresh chilies as well. So that's why, in a way, it's, it can be arguably hotter than Sichuan food. Sichuan food focuses on that numbing peppercorn spice. Look at the taro. This is not so, in a boba. Did they put a uh, chicken oil? Yo. I love tendon because it has a little bit of that beef, taro and beef tendon soup. The taro really breaks down in your mouth. That's really soft. The tendon is tender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is not really a spicy dish. This is like something you need to wash your palate with. This is very light in flavor. Chinese cuisine is not known for grilling steak or grilling beef, but when it comes to beef brisket and beef tendon, 
I've been notified by our producer that you have to keep skimming the broth to make it clear to take the impurities out to make sure it's not brown. These two dishes were kind of similar. That one, very different. Yo, of these two, I'm not gonna lie, I think I would go with the pepper pork. Mm -hmm. so to me, this one had more flavors and more layers more to the complexity. dish. More complexities as far as eatability. And we talk about if we had to eat like this whole plate, this would be a lot easier. Here we got the cauliflower, bro. Ganban Hua Thai. Oh my goodness, Damn. yo. I didn't know you spoke multiple dialects. Hey. Uh, you did it. You did it. I've been keeping it on the low. I didn't know this until we moved to the 626 and we started eating a lot of mainland food, how popular cauliflower is in mainland cuisine. There are pieces of pork fat in this cauliflower. Pieces oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. This is my favorite vegetarian dish. Mao Zedong is from Hunan. That's how Hunan like actually got really, really famous. He loves pork fat. I could eat the pork fat all day, man. There's celery in here too, right? Uh-huh. Oh, I like celery a lot Darn. too, man. There's a lot of veggies in there. Yo, I'm not really used to just picking up big ass pieces of pepper either. Look at what Hunan food got you doing, David. It's got you acting totally different, man. I would say the spice level, if there's only three levels, is one out of three. I would say I would need like a two. Yeah. We got the two coming up though. What was you guys' favorite out of round one? I'm kind of on this low carb tip right now, so I'm rolling with the cauliflower. As far as a vegetarian dish, not vet. I was gonna say two. I think the cauliflower was my favorite. A lot of these, if you minus some of the peppers, it does kind of look like Cantonese food. Yeah? Yeah. Like Cantonese serve it like this. There's a lot of stir frying, a lot of, a lot of soups. Round two of Hunan cuisine has arrived. We have red braised fish. Yu. So century eggs and eggplant. Cheers a lajao pita. Mashed together. In a pestle and mortar. Stir it up, stir it up. It's wild. Yo, and you kind of look like the, uh, you know those Japanese guys who make mochi? Oh. Hoo. And Hoo. then the one guy Hoo. pats it. Egg, 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 egg. All right, let's start with the red fish. This is the thing about eating fish is that you just gotta watch out for the bones. So so you gotta scrape it off from the tail end, all right? So I got, I got a couple bones in there, watch out for that. And then you gotta take the uh, chalk sticks. So now I'm gonna try to pull this whole bone off. You perform a surgery. Spinal surgery, son. Are you some people probably look at this like, this is exactly why I do not eat. <laughs> no, I get it. I, I think some people, when they see the whole fish, they, they don't like the look of it. Look at this head right here. That cod. Ah! And my favorite meat on the, the fish is the, the cheeks. The cheeks the fish are really cheek. good. Fish cheek. The fish, fish cheek, cheek is amazing. No, you got Eating fish is a lot of trouble, but it's actually a lot of fun too. Oh. I feel the tongue lock, guys. Right away, man. You right feel away. the middle, the middle heat. The Woo! I ain't mad though. I'm gonna need this pop open this coconut milk right here. Is this weird that I'm just going out on this fish's head? No, it's not weird. You do it for the culture. All right, eggplant pee don. People probably would not think that Chinese food has the pestle and mortar, but you know what I heard? The forest of Hunan is the traditional stomping ground of the Hmong and the Mian people. They still exist in China today. I would not be surprised if this was heavily influenced by ethnic Miao or uh, Yao. The egg yolk mm. is providing that mm. smoothness. I'm not a fan of eggplant, but I could eat it this way though. Mm. All mashed up. Especially no. with the peppers. The peppers just taste good. I just keep eating peppers. You like baby food. You have to eat baby food too again when you get old though. Like they say, man, your parents take care of you when you're young, but when they get old, you got to take care of them. All right, guys. Pijiu ya. Bejiu nga. Pijiu nga. We just manned over culture. Our culture. We got Changsha. Changsha, <laughs> by the way, is the capital of Hunan. And by the way, Hunan TV is the most popular TV network in China. They got wild mushrooms, they got chili, peppers, onions, garlic. Oh my gosh, it looks Dude, there's dumb. beer in here. Yo, the flavor is great, but it's a little hard to eat. <clears throat> our producer, Adina, was talking about how she uses beer in all her braised dishes. My dad actually uses a lot of beer in a lot of his cooking. Mm -hmm. He puts it in like, like hot pasta. Beer That's steak. a little bit spicy, but I need to get more meat. I'm not gonna lie, these pieces are pretty hard to eat, like, because there's well, a lot did. of little bones. How you living, man? It's kicking, ass. Oh, that got you? I'm chilling with this one. Because you're eating it with the rice. I'm eating this right. Oh. Woo. Woo. This is a two out of three. Good level of hot right here. What you see right now in New York, guys, is you see a lot of people that are from restaurant families in China trying to do some like sort of hipsterization or elevation of their local cuisine. We had the modernized version of Hunan food before we had the full traditional. This is a three out of three coming up right here. Yo, I can, level three, level three. Guys, I can smell the seeds on this thing. This is smoked beef. Oh my gosh, bro. It just smells like you just cracked open up chili. This is la nyo ro, gan chao ting la jiao. That's smoked beef with clear stir-fried peppers. You ready? Oh 
Nelson going conservative with the bite. Real conservative. E. R. Son. Oh! Yeah, I feel like it's a creeper. I hit my throat. You can see the steams and the flames coming out of my head. My dad would love this place. Oh man. my god. Ah! My nose is wet. Very. Since everybody's in a vulnerable state due to the usage of peppers, give me your craziest <coughs> NBA hot take within the next five seconds. Now, go. LeBron plays zero defense. Okay. Ah. Jeremy's gonna help the Toronto Raptors with the Eastern Conference. Ah. Kyrie's a loser. You're just doing that to cool down. Kyrie's leaving. Woo! Kyrie's leaving. I'm crying. And the Celtics would be better off re-signing Terry Rozier for and a lesser else. amount anyway. <laughs> ah! Would you say that that's the closest you can get to a drug-induced experience? I would say if you added peppercorn to that, the numbing sensation is pretty crazy. That's why they do that show Hot Ones. Because people, when they're under the influence of the hotness, they give different oh answers. Yeah, absolutely. I love and kind of am weirded out by the name of this dish. It's called Ants on a Tree. Mai Shangshu. Really, really good. I would say. I'm a big fan. If you're of familiar with the, mm. maybe like Korean japchae. Yeah. It's a similar noodle. Glass noodle. Chinese right. lesson. Mai is ant. Shangshu, that means going up the tree. Guys, there is a uh, Chinese meme video where this guy is cooking this dish that's hella funny. That's the one we watch. We watch, well he yeah. chops it with his hand. <laughs> da da pai pai Big pork rib. Oh my god, you see this right off? It's like, um, I like the pieces of more fat. That was one of the best pork ribs I had. For real, you wanna see ants on a tree? On a log? Then you gotta see the ants on a log. The customizer. Listen guys, I'm not being a communist apologist, but systems of different culture and scale sometimes need to have centralized control. You know if everybody was being the same, that's what makes the <clears throat> NBA a little bit boring right now. Everybody's just running around shooting threes like yeah. crazy. Democracy is the Warriors three-point system. <laughs> it shouldn't be applied to every team. Boring. China is such a big country and it's so diverse and there's so many people. True democracy is not gonna work. Guys, our last hot dish is ending off on something that not everybody likes to eat. Pig's feet? Or in better terms, pork knuckle. I would never order a whole dish like this. We have um, our producer, Adina. Your parents are not only from Hunan, but you also speak the Hunan dialect. I do. What is this in Changsha? This is Zhu Jiao in Mandarin, right? But in Changsha Kwa, it's Zhu Zhu. We'll do the, the Mandarin Cantonese oh, yeah. Changsha thing. Ni wo ga yao cha gom do la jiao. Why do you get so much spicy food? Yeah. Oh, damn, I'm good at that. Wow. Hey, these guys are gum dog. Why do you eat so much spicy food? Yeah. You ate this dish growing up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pig's I feet. I remember it. Mm. That's really tender. Yeah. I will say this, if you do not like pig's feet, try this dish though. It's very saucy, lots of flavor. Yeah, when I was a kid, I always used to struggle with pig's feet because if you use your hands to eat it, they get super sticky. Oh yeah, I mean like. <laughs> you can tell. Yo, like it sits on paper like that. coated in fat. It's the collagen, yeah. It's actually yeah. mainly collagen, which is really good for your skin. That is, oh my <laughs> gosh. I will say this, of all the pig feet dishes, this is definitely up there. Cool thing about pig's feet. Um, they break That's down the bone gooey, marrow gooey. because they braise it for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And so you can like just scoop out the bone marrow. Sichuan, in the last five years, has been touted and is known as like the culinary center of spicy food in China. Yes. What do you think? Sichuan I, versus Hunan. My biggest qualm is that Hunan food is by far much spicier. It's hotter. Oh! Due to the usage of just fresh chilies versus peppercorn. Yeah. I might prefer Hunan food. There it is. I agree. I don't like the numbingness of the Sichuan food. Oh, I will okay. agree, Hunan got some kick. Super underrated. Yeah, though. super underrated. I think Hunan food shares so many culinary techniques with Cantonese food. Sichuan food is more different. It's still the verdict's out. It's being contrarian. Jury's still out for me. You know what it is? I'll say this. I got a new appreciation for Hunan food. Mm -hmm. Now go down the list, what's your favorite? I like the cauliflower, Peppa Pig. Ants on a tree was pretty good too. I really like that eggplant, thousand year old egg, that's the eggplant mash. I love the usage of the garlic and the chives. The duck was crazy, and that oh. had wild mushrooms in it. And then I'm a real big fan of the da pai gu. I would put pig's feet up there. You know what flavor we did not have today? There's no yeah, yeah. sweet. We don't use sugar in our savory dishes. This is tang yen. Wow, I taste a lot of the wine. I actually really like this. You guys notice an egg in this tang yen though? Yeah, good. Chinese food, much like American food, 
if you look at America, it's a country with a lot of land, a lot, a lot of different types of people, and a lot of different regions. You look at Tex-Mex cuisine, and then you look at like North Atlantic cuisine like Boston, you know, with all the chowders and the lobsters, Seattle cuisine with all the salmon. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I, I would argue that like, provincial Chinese food is almost like the difference between like different countries, like French yeah. versus Spanish food. It is more different than America because in America you can find a little bit of almost everything. What do you want to say to all the Hunan kids out there? So when I was talking to the owner of this spot, he was telling me that like basically his clientele is just international kids. Like he doesn't really get like older Hunan people and he doesn't really get like ABCs. I feel like that's a shame. We can definitely focus on cultivating the Hunan presence a little more strongly in America, not just like a Chinese presence. You know, a lot of people, if they're not proactive, they only know their parents' food, you know, anything at a boba shop, anything at a Hong Kong cafe, their parents' province. People are gonna know, like, ABCs will know Korean or Japanese or Vietnamese food or Thai food better than they know another province of China's food. Yeah. For sure. I just encourage people who like to explore other cultures' foods to also explore other provinces' foods, you know, especially if you're Chinese, obviously, you know, that's kind of who I'm referring to. And even if you're not Chinese, try it. What's one other province we should try? I was say something out west, man. Xinjiang? Xinjiang. Xinjiang is pretty west. We do yeah. have something lined up for you. All right, that's it. David. I would say Martin. that uh, one thing that I do want to cover is Fujianese. I'm trying to try a Hangzhou food. Guangxi food. Thank you so much for watching that episode of Hot Pop Boys. Woo! Shout out to Adina, shout out to Shang Cuisine. Shout out to everybody in Hunan. You know, Hunan does look like the word human. Oh. One line of a letter away. Let us know anything else that you guys know or think about Hunan cuisine in the comment section below. Make sure you let us know some other provincial inter-Chinese things. But don't worry guys, if you guys are not Chinese, that does not mean we are done trying non-Chinese things. This is the Chinese series where we go and explore Chinese food like you've never seen. Can you take us out in Changsha Hua? Dai ka zai jian. Dai ka zai jian. Peace. Yo, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for watching that video. Uh, basically, we are gonna be releasing a lot more content that we always wanted to give you guys. We never really had a good way of doing it and that's why I wanna tell you guys that we are starting YouTube memberships. So basically, if you subscribe to the membership channel, you are gonna get tons of exclusive content. You're gonna get exclusive photos, exclusive videos. We're gonna be doing NBA talks, comments on comments. You're gonna be getting merch discounts. Basically, you can just click the join button right there. It is only $4.99 per month and it's gonna go all on our community tab right here.